From a missing data perspective, we have learned the use of EM algorithm which estimates the parameters of from a missing data without really imputing the missing data. The other way of dealing with the missing data is to fill in the values of the missing data. Now, how do we fill in the missing values? Now, there are various methods for filling in this missing values and once the missing values are plugged in by their uh, this plausible values, then it results in a complete data and we can analyze the complete data. This sort of analysis is called imputation. We had very briefly touched upon imputation in the introduction to missing data session. So, where we had said that we can impute the values, get the complete data and do our analysis. Here we would be talking about imputation technique, but we would be more specifically focusing on something called the multiple imputation technique by Rubin. Now, the multiple imputation technique goes one step above the imputation technique where one imputes the missing data multiple number of times, does the analysis multiple number of times and from that set of estimates obtained from the multiple analysis, the original the or the final value of the estimate is obtained by pulling in the estimates obtained from multiple analysis. So, we would be talking about imputation in general, but more specifically about multiple imputation. In the next video, we would be showing how to apply the imputation technique or the multiple imputation technique using R. The objective here is to get an idea about imputation and to get an idea about multiple imputation in specific. So, imputation is a quick procedure where the missing data are filled in by plausible values. So, this plausible values can be obtained using a variety of methods. The imputation method is a quick procedure, but it cannot discriminate between legitimate and biased situations because the users generally have no idea about what the missing data was. So, they just the user just impute the value and proceed as if the data was not missing. Now, there are many types of imputation schemes available. The most some of the most popular imputation schemes are imputing unconditional mean, where the unconditional mean is plugged in for all the missing values and then the analysis is carried on. Sometimes if we have more than one observation, then we can impute using the conditional mean. So, for example, in a bivariate normal context, if one some of the values of one variable is missing and we have the values of the other variable, then what we can do is we can form a sort of a regression equation of y 1 on y 2. If y 1 are the values which are missing, then we can have a regression equation of y 1 on y 2 and then impute the values from the predicted from the predicted values from the regression equation. So, here the regression equation is the conditional mean of y 1 given y 2. One can in general also use the mean imputation technique. So, if y i j be the value of y for unit i in cell j, then substitute the mean of y j r of the non-responding unit in cell j for units that are sampled, but so for all the all the non responding units in that cell, the mean is placed and then once one does the normal analysis. The problem here is that the variance is 
underestimated. A betterment is the hot deck imputation where the values are taken from similar occurring observations. So, we are not going into the details of hot deck imputation, but there are also variations of hot deck imputations like nearest neighbor hot deck and hot deck by covariates etcetera. Typically, a hot deck imputation gives a better or a larger variance than the standard mean imputation. Now, Rubin in 1987 conceived a method known as the multiple imputation. The multiple imputation is a Monte Carlo technique whereby the imputation is made not once, but multiple number of times in general m number of times and typically m is taken between 3 to 10. So, we can think of multiple imputation as a three step process. The first process is imputation where the missing entries in the data are imputed, then the analysis where for one imputation we have a complete data set. So, we analyze that complete data set and since we are imputing m times, so this results in m complete data sets. So, basically we are analyzing the com m complete data sets. So, all of this m complete data sets give results to m estimates or m set of estimates. Then finally, the pooling is done where the m analysis results into a final estimate. Now, assume that q is some statistic of interest in the population which we want to estimate. So, q can be like population mean or regression coefficient or population variance or etcetera, but the problem is that the data contains missing values. So, we can estimate q by two things or two parameters or two, uh, two statistics. One is q hat and one is q bar where q hat is the estimate from a single complete data and then we can do this q hat multiple number of times and get q bar to be a pooled estimates from q hat. Note that q hat only accounts for the sampling uncertainty, but q bar accounts for both the sampling uncertainty as well as the missing data uncertainty. Because if we impute only once, we cannot have an idea about the missing data uncertainty. So, suppose q i hat is the estimate for the ith imputation, then q hat q bar is simply the average of all m imputations, which is 1 by m summation i runs from 1 to m q i hat. Now, there can be within and between imputation variances. So, let us see how what are their measures, how do we measure that. So, we start with uh, defining the object or the quantity u, which is the squared standard error of q. We estimate u by u bar, where u i hat is the covariance matrix of q i hat where q i at is the estimate of the ith imputation. Then u bar is 1 by m i runs from 1 to m u i hat. Note that u i hat is the variance within the estimate u i hat. So, this gives me a or this gives a within variance estimate of q i hat. Similarly, I can get a between variance estimate of q i hat by using q i hat minus q bar q i hat minus q bar transpose divided by m minus 1. So, this would give a between variance of the m complete data estimates. Let t denotes the total variance of q hat a q bar sorry. So, t comes out to be u hat plus b plus b by m where b by m is the simulation error and this can be written as u bar plus 1 plus 1 by m b. So, the intuition for t is as follows that u bar 
is the variance in q bar caused by the fact that we are using a sample b is the variance caused by the fact that there are missing values in our sample and b by m is the simulation variance from the fact that q bar is based on a finite m so the larger we have m the more the the more is the denominator in b by m so b by m becomes small and hence the value of t goes to or tends to u bar plus b that is the total is tends to within plus between we have sufficiently large number of m. Now, we can use this idea to construct the confidence intervals. So, for multiple imputation the to be valid we assume that with complete data q hat minus q by root over of u should follow normal 0 1 but we do not have q hat from the complete data. So, we can construct the confidence interval like q bar minus q by square root of t that follows t v where v is the approximate degrees of freedom or the degrees of freedom for the t distribution and it comes out to be m minus 1 1 plus u bar by 1 plus 1 by m into b square. Now, once the theory has been established then comes the imputation step. So, one thing that needs to be noted is that the validity of the inference relies on how the imputations are generated. Now, Rubin's condition for randomization valid is expectation of q bar given y should be q hat, expectation of u bar given y should be u and 1 plus 1 by m into expectation of b given y should be greater than the variance of q bar. If the complete data inference is randomization valid and the imputation satisfies the Rubin's condition, then the finite m multiple imputation in inference should also be randomization valid. However, these conditions are not easy to satisfy and may often require a Bayesian approach. Now, this can in R we use a package called mice to do multiple imputation. So, in the next session we would be seeing how we can use mice to do a regression problem where the data is missing. So, the mice package uses a variety of methods for imputation. We are not going to discuss the theoretical backgrounds for this imputation methods, but just for sake of record the mice package uses predictive mean matching or linear regression imputation both Bayesian and non Bayesian it uses linear regression with bootstrap for imputation, it uses unconditional mean imputation that is the mean imputation that we were talking of and that that is for the continuous variables. For factor variables or for factor variables with two levels one can use the logistic regression for imputation or logistic regression with bootstrap for imp imputation. For continuous variables with more than one variable more than two levels uh, one can use the multinomial logistic model or the ordered logistic model or linear discriminant analysis for predictions and then use the imputed data sets for use the imputed data sets uh, for further analysis. So, in the following video we would be using what is called a predictive mean matching which is y observed. So, first we obtain what is y hat observed that is a predicted value from the regression and then calculate y hat missing from the regression and then some sort of a hot date type of an imputation where among the y hat observed locate the observations whose predicted value is closest to y j hat and for m equal to n impute the random draws from the n observations where the predicted value is closest to y m hat. So, in this video we learnt about 
the multiple imputation technique. So, imputation in general means that the missing values are filled in with plausible values. So, this gives an appearance of a complete data set. When we have the complete data set, we can analyze it normally. However, there can be two types of variability and one is the sampling variations. The other can be that we are imputing the missing data. So, there can be a variation due to imputation. Now, if we do the imputation only once, an estimate of this variation is difficult to obtain. So, Rubin suggested an idea of multiple imputation, which is a three step procedure and starts with imputing multiple number of times and for each imputed data set, the estimates are computed and once the estimates are computed, they are pooled to get a single estimate. All the, the multiple imputation is implemented in R by the MICE package and the MICE package uses a variety of imputation based on the type of variable. So, if it is numeric, it uses mostly linear uh, predictive mean matching and linear regression with Bayesian or non-Bayesian options or bootstrap or if it is a factor, factor variable or a categorical variable, then it uses logistic regression or one can use linear discriminant analysis. So, in this, in the coming uh, session, we would be seeing an example of how mice works in context to a real life, in, a, in context to a data so, in the next se session, it would be an applic application session in R, where we would be using the various functions in the library mice to see how one can deal with multiple imputation.